Grade 7 students, welcome to the City Math. I am Teacher Giselle, your Mathing Math 7 teacher. Today is another movie for fun, challenges, and new learning in mathematics. Our movie for today will play in a few minutes. Since it is not yet starting, let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. You have four questions to answer. For each question, you have 10 seconds to answer. Are you ready? First, give the square root of the following. Number 1. Square root of 81. Your timer starts now. The answer is 9, since 9 times 9 is 81. Number 2, the square root of 144. Timer starts now. The correct answer is 12, since 12 times 12 is 144. Next, you have to determine which two consecutive integers do the following square roots lie? Number 1. Square root of 30. Your timer starts now. The correct answer is 5 and 6. Number 2. The square root of 250. Your timer starts now. The correct answer is 15 and 16. Great job, students! Sit back and relax because the movie is about to begin. In a beautiful place called Paraiso, there lived a pack of wolves, the Malipayun family. The family consists of Papa Wolf, Mama Wolf, and Baby Wolf. One day, Papa Wolf decided to go out for a picnic near the river, far enough from their home. They were all very excited. When they arrived at the place, Papa Wolf and Mama Wolf prepared the food immediately. As their attention was on something, they forgot to check on the baby wolf. The baby wolf saw a beautiful butterfly and followed it. He kept on following without noticing the distance between his parents. When Mama Wolf realizes that her baby is gone, she is shocked and starts to feel anxious. She quickly calls Papa Wolf and says that the baby is gone. They immediately searched the area but found no trace of the baby wolf. On the other side, as the baby wolf realizes that he is in a different place already, he stops and scans the area. He saw two ways to go back, but he doesn't remember which way. As he was howling and trying to ask for help, he saw a fairy with two sparkling boxes near her. He comes closer and reads the wood sign. The baby wolf has no choice but to estimate the numbers to the nearest hundred. Will you help the baby wolf reunite with his parents? If yes, then prepare your self-learning module, extra paper, and your wall pen. To help the baby wolf, we are going to discuss estimating the square roots. Our main goal is to estimate the square root of a whole number to the nearest hundred. Are you ready? According to the fairy, there are two methods to estimate the square root of a whole number to the nearest hundred. The number in the first box should be estimated using the method A. And the number in the second box should be estimated using the method B. Thus, we will discuss the two methods of estimating the square root of a whole number to the nearest hundred. When finding the square root of an irrational number, you will observe non-ending and non-repeating numbers. 
Thus, a series of estimations are made to determine the approximate value of numbers that are not perfect squares. We have two methods to estimate the square root of a number to the nearest hundred. For method A, we have four steps to remember. The S, D, Av, Re. Step 1. S means estimate. Get as close as you can by finding two perfect square roots your number is between. Step 2. D. D means divide. Divide your number by one of those square roots. Step 3. Av. Av means average. Take the result of step 2 and the root. And step 4. Re. Re means repeat. Use the result in step 3 to repeat steps 2 and 3 until you have the number that is accurate enough for you. Let's take a look at these examples. Estimate the following square roots to the nearest hundred. Number 1. Square root of 10. Number 2. Square root of 200. We know that 10 is not a perfect square. Thus, we will estimate the square root of the number using method A. Step 1. Get as close as you can by finding two perfect squares your number is between. The two perfect squares that 10 is between are 9 and 16. Square root of 10 is greater than the square root of 9 but is lesser than the square root of 16. The square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 16 is 4. Thus, the square root of 10 must be between 3 and 4. Step 2. Divide your number by one of those square roots. Our number is 10, and our chosen square root is 3. Thus, we divide 10 by 3. The quotient is 3.333, a rational number with non-terminating and repeating decimal. To have the same answer, round off the partial result to the nearest 10,000, and the final result to the nearest 100. Since we are estimating the square root, of a whole number to the nearest hundred. Step 3. Take the result of step 2 and the root. To get the average, add the result and divide them by 2. The result in step 2 is 3.333 and the root is 3. Hence, 3.333 plus 3 all over 2. The answer is 3.1667. Step 4. Use the result in step 3 to repeat steps 2 and 3 until you have the number that is accurate enough for you. The result in step 3 is 3.1667. Use this to repeat step 2. Hence, 10 divided by 3.1667 results to 3.1579. Now, repeat step 3. Add 3.1579 and 3.1667 and divide them by 2. The result is 3.1623. Before we decide to repeat step 4, let's check first if 3.1623 is accurate enough to be the square root of 10. 3.1623 times 3.1623 is equal to 10.0001. Based on the result, 3.1623 is the most accurate square root of 10. Therefore, the result of 10 is approximately equal to 3.16. The square root of 10 estimated to the nearest hundred is 3.16. Next example, square root of 200. Step 1. The two perfect squares closest to 200 are 196 and 225. The square root of 196 is 14 and the square root of 225 is 15. So, the square root of 200 must be between 14 and 15. Step 2. 200 divided by 15 equals 13.333. Step 3. The average of the quotient 13.333 and the perfect square root 15 is 14.1667. Step 4. The result in step 3 is 14.1667. We will use this to repeat step 
2. Hence, 200 divided by 14.1667 results to 14.1176. Now, repeat step 3. Add 14.1176 and 14.1667 and divide by 2. The result is 14.1422. Again, before we decide to repeat step 4, let us check first if 14.1422 is accurate enough to be the square root of 200. 14.1422 times 14.1422 is equal to 200.0018. Based on the result, 14.1422 is the most accurate square root of 200. Therefore, the square root of 200 is approximately equal to 14.14. The square root of 200 estimated to the nearest hundred is 14.14. For method B, we must remember the formula. Given number minus lower perfect square all over higher perfect square minus lower perfect square. To use the formula, we have four steps to follow. Step 1. Find two perfect square numbers your number is between. Step 2. Substitute the numbers to the given formula. Step 3. Round off the result to the nearest hundred. Step 4. Add the result to the principal square root of the lower perfect square number. Let's take a look at these examples. Estimate the following square roots to the nearest hundred. Number 1. Square root of 141. Number 2. Square root of 34. We know that square root of 141 is not a perfect square. Thus, we will estimate the square root of the number using method B. Step 1. Find two perfect square numbers your number is between. The two perfect square numbers that 141 is between are 121 and 144. Square root of 141 is greater than the square root of 121 but is lesser than the square root of 144. The two perfect square roots that square root of 141 is between are 11 and 12. Thus, the estimated root must be 11 point something. Step 2. Substitute the numbers to the given formula. The given number is 141. The lower perfect square is 121. And the higher perfect square is 144. Now, we will substitute the numbers to the given formula. 141 minus 121 all over 144 minus 121. The answer is 20 over 23 and is approximately equal to 0 0.8695. Step 3. Round off the result to the nearest hundred. Hence, 0 0.8695 will be 0 0.87. Step 4. Add the result to the principal square root of the lower perfect square number. The lower perfect square number is 121 and the square root is 11. Thus, 11 plus 0 0.87 is equal to 11.87. Therefore, the square root of 141 is approximately equal to 11.87. The square root of 141 estimated to the nearest hundredth is 11.87. Next example, square root of 34. Step 1. The two perfect square numbers that 34 is between are 25 and 36. The square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 36 is 6. Thus, the estimated root must be 5 point something. Step 2. The given number is 34. The lower perfect square is 25 and the higher perfect square is 36. Now, we will substitute the numbers to the given formula. 34 minus 25 all over 36 minus 25. The answer is 9 over 11 and is approximately equivalent to 0 0.8182. Step 3. Round off the result to the nearest hundred. Hence, 0 0.8182 will be 0 0.82. Step 4. The lower perfect square number is 25 and the square root is 5. Thus, 5 plus 0 0.82 is equal to 5.82. 
Therefore, the square root of 34 is approximately equal to 5.82. The square root of 34 estimated to the nearest hundredth is 5.82. Though the steps in method B vary from method A, the two methods result in the same estimated square root of a whole number that is not a perfect square. I think you are ready to have the baby wolf open the two boxes. The first box has a square root of 300. You have a minute to estimate the number to the nearest hundred. Step 1. The two perfect squares closest to 300 are 289 and 324. The square root of 289 is 17. The square root of 324 is 18. So the square root of 300 must be between 17 and 18. Step 2. 300 divided by 17 equals 17.6471. Step 3. The average of the quotient 17.6471 and the perfect square root 17 is 17.3236. Step 4. The result in step 3 is 17.3236. Use this to repeat step 2. Hence, 300 divided by 17.3236 is 17.3174. Repeat step 3. Add 17.3236 17.3174 and divide them by 2. The result is 17.3205. Before we decide to repeat step 4, let's check first if 17.3205 is accurate enough to be the square root of 300. 17.3205 times 17.3205 is equal to 299.9997. Based on the result, 17.3205 is the most accurate square root of 300. Therefore, the square root of 300 estimated to the nearest hundredth is 17.32. Congratulations, you have successfully opened the first box. However, the baby wolf still has to open the second box with a square root of 94 to get the map. You have a minute to estimate the number to the nearest hundred.
Step 1. The two perfect square numbers that 94 is between are 81 and 100. The square root of 81 is 9 and the square root of 100 is 10. Thus, the estimated root must be 9 point something. Step 2. The given number is 94. The lower perfect square is 81 and the higher perfect square is 100. Now, we will substitute the numbers to the given formula. 94 minus 81 all over 100 minus 81. The answer is 13 over 19 and is approximately equivalent to 0 0.6842. Step 3. Round off the result to the nearest 100. Hence, 0 0.6842 will be 0 0.68. Step 4. The lower perfect square number is 81 and the square root is 9. Thus, 9 plus 0 0.68 is equal to 9.68. Therefore, the square root of 94 estimated to the nearest hundredth is 9.68. Congratulations! You have successfully opened the second box! But, which map will he use to go back to his parents? Well, whether you choose the map from box A or box B, both maps will lead you to your parents. The route is different, but the destination is the same. The baby wolf got so happy and excited to go back to his parents. When he arrived, he shared everything that had happened to him. His parents were very happy and thankful to all of you. Before we officially conclude today's activity, I'd like you to complete some additional work on your self-learning module. Please answer what's more. In the following episode, we'll learn how to plot irrational numbers on a number line. I'm Teacher Giselle, your Mathematics 7 teacher. I hope you enjoy today's film and learn something new.